I want to share with you what it was like to experience virtual production for the very first time using Sisu Robotics camera arms, Unreal Engine, and a TV. All right, so I'm gonna give you a quick tour of how this is set up. Obviously not gonna get into the intricacies of it because uh, most of us can't afford a robot. So, robot here. This is gonna house the camera. We have the red Komodo on it. Hey Marcus, what are these? Basically, this is the KUKA robot. These robots are normally used for like welding and machining. And so that's what this big robot here is and that's what this is, the computer for this. Uh, the company Sisu is the one that built this, it's called the Fizz Unit, and this is like the translator basically uh, telling this crazy industrial software how to create it into like a more cinema friendly um, space. And so it shoots all the data from here. We do all the controls over here. We use like this tablet, which has a trigger on the back. You can use the joystick here to move the robot. The really cool thing about Sisu that I like most is that if you know anything about After Effects, which I'm sure most of the people watching this do, it's all keyframe based. Um, so you have your camera channel, your, your target, and your zoom. So you can basically set your keyframes along a moving timeline. So it's very, like it translates very well to like any type of editing software. So. But really the purpose behind doing something such as using a big robot and Unreal Engine is that you get repeatable camera moves. And that's one of the things I'm super interested in. I am on the 3D motion graphics VFX side. My friend Marcus is on the shooting side. So the benefit about combining our superpowers is that he can bring the repeatable camera movements and the ability to export camera information into 3D in which we can use that information in Unreal to get a cool background and two, get a matching movement so that we can bring into After Effects for titles or graphics or any other key components that we would want to showcase from a commercial standpoint. Because let's be real, the biggest, coolest part about this is the background and getting a really cool looking environment. But what clients love is the features of their products being showcased. So that's why I'm super interested in this. And the way this is working is I have a Cine camera actor and that connects directly to the CISO robot. Now, I understand most people will probably never ever get a robot that is able to do stuff like this. It's just a really cool toy that uh, my friend is able to play with. And um, I just wanna show you what it's like to be on the virtual production side. Now, having spent a day using the Sisu camera arm with the camera operator and my friend Marcus and myself doing the Unreal Engine side, I saw some really awesome advantages of using a toolkit like this. Granted, I understand it is very expensive, very out of this world, but I do believe that this is where the industry is going to be going for high level production, especially in the commercial world. There's two things. One. We live in the social media age and we're fighting for attention everywhere. Our goal as cinematographers is to create something visually engaging to get someone to stay on that ad or stay on the content. So tools like this can do something very, very interesting. Sure, you could do it in 3D, but then you gotta model, texture, light, etc. And sure, you have to do texturing and lighting and whatever else, but people making products, they typically don't need a 3D model if they could just shoot it and get a really cool looking shot of it as well. So this toolkit is great for hero shots and great for those awesome pre-roll ads that you see on YouTube or at the beginning of Instagram videos or whatever else. This can help create something visually different that you will never see with someone holding a camera in their hands using a gimbal, even a steady cam. Now the second advantage to this is speed. When it comes to being able to shoot something and get it in camera right out of the sensor, that is amazing for post-production because guess what? You don't need to do any. Now on our shoot yesterday, when we shot this, we had an idea for the Nike shoe and the Magic the Gathering deck box that we did. 
Now we realize that doing the method with the Nike shoe and the clean plate proved to be more challenging, so that is why that edit is not done at the time of this vlog. Stay tuned for that. But the little Magic the Gathering deck box that I brought to set just on a whim, we were able to bang that out in just a couple of hours after we brought it into the editing software. And that key advantage of speed is going to help so well in creating more content. Because really, we as artists don't want to be bottlenecked by the software. We want to make art. And tools like this enable that. So we just wrapped up, and here's the edit of how everything turned out. Both of these projects were just YOLO for fun. I just wanted to do them just to try out the virtual production workflow. I had a lot of fun and there's a couple things that I learned from it. The first is that it can take a long time to art direct some of these shots. Yes, you have a robot and it can do perfect moves, but you're also dealing with a piece of equipment that is 2,500 pounds. When it came to Unreal Engine, I love the ability to just plug into the Sisu workflow. If you were to do something on a DSLR like a Sony, you would have to get a Vive or something. I've not dived into that yet, but that's something you would need to get into. And I don't know if I'm ready for that because of the big thing that we learned. If you have a small TV, you're pretty limited to the kind of camera moves that you can do. A lot of the time it's gonna be just a push in and out or very small, simple parallax moves. On top of that, we learned with the Nike shoe that something that we were missing from that shot was foreground objects. When you had something in the scene on top of the background that really helped create that sense of depth, that enhanced the shot. So these are all things that you learn through compositing and cinematography, but I wanted to just reinforce those points because vir for virtual production, it's still production, you still have to obey camera moves and design and lighting and all that fun stuff, but you just have more expensive toys and they are theoretically faster. Like if we were to do this with a green screen, we would have to go back and do more post-production. With this edit, our goal was to try and make everything work in camera so that we didn't have to do any post-production. We can drop it on a timeline, do our color grade, and render it out and show it to the world. So that's why virtual production is doing so well right now, because it eliminates that post-production process of like, now we gotta comp it in, now we gotta bring this into Nuke, we have to do all these other things. We don't have to do that now. And that is what's exciting for me on post-production, virtual production things. Tell me your thoughts. I think it's awesome. I wish we had a big LED wall now, but I think it was great for what we had. I think it's just learning your limitations of what you have, you know, what you have access to. But I mean, it's pretty cool to be able to change your background and set your camera moves. You've got to pre-plan your shots. It takes a long time, you know? So I hope you learned something. Let me know in the comment section down below if you did. I uh, enjoyed making this little vlog and going through the process of that. Um, hit me up on Instagram and eat one gram of protein per pound of body weight and you make some Bye. Bye.